And I said, Lisa, I was just working with this project around hope. She says, let's do it. <laughs> and so the uh, applications were due for the pilot projects. And so we put it together and submitted it and were funded. And so uh, that's what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, unfortunately, Lisa and Liz Belt and Steve Hernandez, who helped with the project uh, with uh, Oglala Lakota Sioux Housing, uh, couldn't be here for various reasons today. So I'm going to try to cover everything. Ooh. Okay. Uh, when we talk about Indian country, we know that suicide is the second leading cause of death, that among adolescents and young adults, the suicide rate's about two and a half times higher than it is with the general population, and that the completion rates with uh, American Indian males is the highest among males, and it's also with females, that it's the highest among females. And at Pine Ridge, they have had a suicide epidemic that's gone on for years, and their rate during the six months prior to applying for this grant was four and a half times the national rate for suicide. So one of the things that really hadn't been looked at is the other side of it. We, we do a lot with suicide, suicide prevention, but we hadn't really talked with the youth about what gave them hope. So Lisa and I were the co-investigators, Liz and Steve were the research associates that helped with focus groups, and it was funded through CRICA, and we see, received approval from um, the Oglala Sioux Research Review Board and the UND Institutional Review Board. This was a community-based participatory action research project in that um, you know, I had been working with the tribe, when with Lisa in particular, for several years, trying to get some projects going, trying to get some funding for some projects that they were wanting to do. And this fit in with some of the things that they were wanting. The project is a three-part approach. First of all, we got information as far as demographics. Uh, then they completed the youth personal ballot scale and then we went to the focus group and had uh, the questions through the focus groups. The second session, well, they would start it as far as ideas in the first session, but then during the second session, um, it, they had to develop a creative project that illustrated what gave them hope. This could be art, dance, music, poetry, uh, drawings, photography, collages, it could be anything they wanted it to be that would demonstrate what it was that gave them hope. And then the third part of it is that they would pre present those creative projects back to the community. <coughs> so we had groups in seven communities. There were 56 participants. 55% male, 45% female, from age 13 to 24, with a mean age of 16, and the education from seventh grade through college sophomores. And almost all of the participants were Lakota youth. And as I said before, there were seven districts that were involved with the groups. So the first thing was the quantitative data. So the youth personal balance scale uh, takes a holistic view of what's happening. And it was created with, by a friend of mine who was working with the Youth Council of Fresno. Uh, and it was adapted by the adult personal balance wheel by Rabidou and Crossbear. It contains 20 questions 
that go across four domains, the physical, mental, spiritual, and emotional, and it's scored on a Likert scale. And on this, this wheel, um, mouse, okay, Let's see if I can, okay. Uh, if we divide this into quadrants, you can faintly see the numbers here, the yellow, the red, the black, and we have light blue representing the white. So in the physical scale, the scaling is from one to four. The mean for males, 3.43, and for females, again, 3.43. So physically, they're both getting about the same uh, as far as their uh, activity. Mental dropped lower to 3.12, and spiritual, for males was 3.2 and less than 3, 2.98 for, for females. So they were less involved in spiritual activities. And then the emotional, was, again, was very close to the same. And I'm not sure if I have, no. Uh, what they do is for each of the, each of the questions, they color the wheel out as far as where their answer is, whether it was one, zero, one, two, three, or four, so that you can see on your personal wheel where you are strong and where you could use more uh, involvement in those activities. So it gives them a visual of kind of how balanced they are with their lives. When we look at the spiritual responses, uh, you can see the questions. And I believe that even though I can't see the creator or spiritual world, we know it exists. 70.9% strongly believe that. Uh, the other responses were lower. So it varied a lot between the youth. When we look at emotional, you know, we see the pattern, it was fairly consistent across them, but you know, only about three. So there were a lot of those types of questions that, you know, as far as expressing those emotions and things like that, there, there was room for some improvement there. The physical, and again, we had uh, high responses. Uh, most people like me, but if they don't, I'm okay with it. it was around over 70% endorsed that. It's the highest degree, uh, but things were lower on some of the others. And then on the mental, um, you know, we found that they were mostly around 50% or below. I'm sorry, I just can't read all of that. But uh, with all of this, they found that really the physical area was the strongest and there was some work that could be done in strengthening some of the other areas to give them more balance. Some of the qualitative uh, results that we had, again, we ended up with those into f the four different domains and they seem to fit very well. The spiritual, that sense of belonging, personal pride, respect, connections, faith, prayer, purpose, vision, love. That kind of reflects the infancy as far as the relationship. Uh, emotional, the mastery of skills and gifts, self-esteem that's accomplished through happiness and enjoyment, things like this. There was, there was a lot of need for some of those things. Uh, physical, that inter interdependence. You know, there's independence where you do things yourself. There's dependence where you have to have others do things for you. 
and interdependence where you do what you can for yourself and then you're able to ask for help when you need it. So we're looking a lot more at being able to do those things. Humility, uh, accepting responsibility, practice, and reading, reaching your potential, okay. Um, and then with the mental, generosity, problem solving, wisdom, freedom from hate, jealousy, and things like that, committed to lifelong learning, service, so being able to give to others is really important as far as the mental. So when we looked at the balance wheel, or the, the medicine wheel with our data, we found that under the spiritual, things like riding horses, being out in nature, being themselves, were a part of those spiritual experiences that were really helpful and uh, helped to give them hope. So you see a lot more, I think, <clears throat> reflected with the spiritual, more solitary types of activities. With the physical, a lot about sports, being active, uh, building things, you know, creating, doing things with your hands. Those were the important things when we asked about, you know, when they introduced themselves about uh, what they like to do. <laughs> and then emotional, uh, helping the family, spending time with family and friends. So those social relationships <laughs> and uh, being able to be helpful were really important in that emotional domain. When we talked about the mental, they focused on writing, poetry, music, art, being creative, those types of things that fell under the mental domain when we ask what they like to do. The next question were, what were their favorite things to do? And one of the things that the review board and Lisa and the group that we were working with really liked about these focus groups is the questions were positive, not what's wrong, but what kinds of things really work what kinds of things engage you? What make you, makes you want to do more and think more and be involved? So again, the spiritual more with identity and connectedness, looking at the stars, spending time in nature, uh, playing with animals. So very much that interaction and seeing their place in the world and the universe, how they were a part of that was very important spiritually. Physically, running, uh, playing, playing ball and uh, basketball, football were the most popular things that came out there. And a lot of that was also that belonging to a group or a team that made them feel hopeful, that they felt connected to someone. As far as the emotional, family and friends were very important. Those that they could connect with. Um, so cruising, hanging out with friends, uh, being around people that make them feel happy not just people, but those that make them feel happy. That was a really important part of that emotional connectedness uh, that made them feel hopeful looking at things from that perspective. And the mental creativity, mental stimulation, whether it was singing, dancing, painting, playing, 
playing video games and other things. Those creating things, whether it was writing or uh, doing writing songs, creating music, uh, any of those types of things really connected with them as far as the mental part. Okay. And then we ask about their dreams for the future. Where did they see themselves? What did they want to do? What kinds of things did they look forward to in the future? Spiritually, they wanted to give back and they wanted to have a sense of purpose in their lives. These uh, really, we felt like were things that were important in trying to develop some suicide prevention programs and identifying those things that will help to give them uh, purpose, to have them have a chance to, to give back, volunteering and doing things for others. So that was very important. Um, achieving their goals, making something of themselves, helping their parents, were all those things that were part of that giving back and having that sense of purpose. As far as uh, the physical, it was more setting goals, uh, playing professional sports. You know, that's pretty common for adolescents is wanting to play professional sports. But then they were also, when we'll see later on, you know, could identify role models with that. Um, joining the military. It's a way to achieve some of those goals and setting success, furthering education, uh, having an identity. All of those things fit in there. On the, uh, the emotional side, that overall stability, having things that you can depend on. Having peace with my family, not wanting <laughs> arguments and things like that going on, feeling like those relationships were good and strong and supportive. Uh, those things were really important. Some, it was uh, being a good role model for their, their children. This, uh, there were a number of them that were part of this that had children. And again, with the mental goal attainment, getting a good job, uh, finishing school, uh, getting back into school. So those things where they really felt like they were uh, getting somewhere with their education to where they would be able to achieve some of those other goals. Those were really important as far as their dreams. Uh, so when, when you're discouraged, what gives you hope? And this was a key question that we wanted to get to. You know, when, when things aren't going right, what is it that gives you hope, that keeps you grounded, that, that makes you want to go on? From the spiritual side, the culture, um, achievement, being myself, looking forward to the future, all of those things were what gave them hope spiritually. With the physical, it was being able to be out and playing sports and running and doing all types of activities that really made a difference in them feeling hopeful. And then emotionally, the family, friends, and their, ch their own children that gave them hope for the future. Mentally, again, it was those creative things, the poetry, the music, the mm -hmm. art, uh, and those types of things. Okay, can't read the top of it, but um, how would you describe or show someone that you were hopeful? How would they, how would they know that you were hopeful? Spiritually by inspiration, that you would, 
inspire, motivate, help others, things like that, that in activities would uh, let others know that you were hopeful because you would inspire them by your actions. And then actively, how would you show someone you were hopeful? Just talking to them, giving them a call, engaging them, those things that they could do to connect with someone else that they may not be seeing or whatever it was to try to pull them in and help them connect. And then emotionally by mentoring. A lot of the youth really talked about being able to mentor someone else would give them hope and let others know that they were being, that they had hope if they could mentor someone else and help them. And then mentally by modeling, teaching people about some kind of work that they did or something creative that they did or sharing something that they were able to do with someone else that helped to set that example was really important for that. And then how would someone else know you were hopeful? Well, that you spiritually, that you bounce back when something happens to you. That just because something negative happens, it doesn't continue to pull you down. That you can change for the better. And we heard this from a lot that, you know, maybe they had been in trouble, maybe they had had problems but the fact that they were able to change and become better uh, would help for others to know that they were hopeful, not like they may have been before. Physically, <clears throat> I could tell by your expressions, your work, your actions, or by asking them that they, you know, just through that interaction, they could tell that they were hopeful, okay? And then emotionally, laughing, smiling, you know, those positive attitudes, emotions, all of those things that you demonstrate to someone else that says, I'm hopeful and I'm moving forward and, you know, no matter what's happened, things are going to get better. And then mentally by people seeing you working, seeing you making progress toward those goals and things like that would model that being hopeful so others would see it and act upon it. Some of the things that I felt like really uh, expressed it as much as anything were their creative projects. Some included reaching their potential through healthy activities, responsibility, positive role models, and support. Uh, here you can see the sports, running, the basketball, and having a native role model in professional sports that encouraged them that that might be possible for them someday. A lot of the statements that go along with those were really positive and encouraging. Whoops, I went the wrong way. Building mental fortitude and resilience through creative self-expression and positive identity, and just some of the statements. Take this with me. Like, uh, what's done is done, what's gone is gone. One of life's lessons is always moving on. So some of the poetry, drawings, and has all these different negative words on the drawing. 
I, it's just a word. Don't let it get you down. Don't let them who says it get, get you down. So providing that encouragement that even if they're getting called names and things like this, they can provide that encouragement to others by telling them, you know, don't worry about that stuff. It doesn't matter. And then the other one, the drawing was really light, so it was hard to see. But uh, some really positive comments and all of these things. Finding inspiration and connectedness to cultural identity, traditional values, and nature. So the smudging, every moment of a, any bad emotion I feel, I pray to my ancestor the spirits and to the creator himself to know how strong, how to be, know how strong and powerful a prayer can be and how the spirits may help in many ways. In our language, Wakanyiza, uh, I'm not sure the pronunciation, but is a sacred being which is translated to children showing them that I can live on daily with our way of life gives me that hope to keep going forward. We've got a uh, rainbow, you know, kind of the, the promises of tomorrow with that. So really seeing those inspirational things in nature and uh, with our spirituality that gives them hope. And then increasing self-esteem, support systems, motivation to succeed through healthy relationships. And you see the football team. There were also a lot of them around basketball. And then uh, their, ch their child and how that child gave them hope to do those things. So some of our findings that there was a high em emphasis on attaining goals and as a, a means of measuring how much hope they had as far as were they making progress and how was that, how, how was that going. A lot of emphasis on education to attain those goals. And this is interesting because in the process, I found out that uh, among adolescents, uh, over 50% over by the time they were sophomores were attending virtual school. They weren't in the high school. So wanting to look more at what that's all about and you know what's better or worse about being in school or doing virtual school and uh, learning more about just what's happening with that. Um, sharing hope was really focused on those relationships and that connectedness and pots, having a positive relationship with someone, whether it was family, friends, that there was someone there was connected to and that that uh, peer mentoring, you know, being able to provide that for others too was really important. And that sense of belonging emerged as really the dominant thing for generating and reciprocating hope. And while the youth are well supported in the physical domain, increasing the support for a healthy self-expression, connectedness, <coughs> positive self-identity, and emotional regulation may help create a more balanced approach to hopeful living. So really a lot of things in there, we want to get into it deeper to uh, really come up with some uh, recommendations as far as things that may be helpful. Some of the limitations, again, the small sample size, uh, needing further qualitative analysis to really look at uh, some of the emerging themes and develop those, those recommendations for programs that may be helpful to reduce the suicides. And that the findings will be Lakota specific and not necessarily generalizable to other 
populations. As far as practice, some things to consider. Taking a family-oriented approach that would strengthen and build healthy bonds. To explore the efficacy of peer-to-peer -peer mentoring and developing relationships and supports through peer mentoring. Validating their personal growth by having doing some goal setting. And with that goal setting, having short-term as well as long-term goals so that they can see that they're making progress through that. Recognizing the, their individual strengths and abilities for goal completion, that we don't all have the same strengths, we don't have, all have the same abilities, but if we're building a home or a team or something, we don't need to all have the same abilities. Those different abilities can all contribute something to making the whole. And going back to how we all, uh, it, it used to be that everybody contributed to making the community stronger, that we can get back into some of that in having a purpose. Recognizing uh, or utilizing the creative forms of art, writing, music, in order to engage youth in positive self-expression. One of the things that came up in one of our discussions was there was a, a young girl who wanted to learn ballet. And there used to be a teacher that kind of taught some classes on the side. They still had the equipment from that but no one to teach. And so we talked about getting her access to the equipment and seeing what they could find on YouTube and other forms of media to help her start learning some things around ballet. Um, continuing to use physical activities like sports to encourage healthy social interactions and those connections that that's strength of those connections that are built within a team and being part of a team. Recognizing the importance of cultural humor and positive laughter. We laugh a lot. We find humor in a lot of things and that keeps us going and that we need to emphasize that and bring that out and show the youth that they can be vehicles for positive change. They can, by, and part of it is presenting these creative projects in their community helps them show others in their community how they can have that positive impact, what kinds of things that they can do, what they can contribute to making it a stronger community. And then working to develop resilience through all of those things. So those are some of the recommendations that uh, we have so far that have come out of this. Those are the references, which are way too small to read. So at this point, I'll open it up for questions. <laughs>